Hello, everybody. Um, I'm going to begin this talk with a quote from the media philosopher or philosopher of communication, Willem Fluser. I uh, quote, models are tools for the understanding of phenomena. They are made by those who seek understanding. They may be improved upon and replaced by better models. This statement is characteristic of the modern age, and it distinguishes it from other ages. For mo 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 moderns, knowledge is in part the result of manipulations of mo models. This is an aspect of progress." End quote. Originally penned sometime around 1980, but only finding publication many years later, this passage is from Fluser's essay titled The Crisis of Our Models, Theoretical Considerations and the Practical Purpose. I've chosen to introduce this paper with this quote as I am reminded of its sentiment, that of the significance of modeling and simulation to our contemporary reality when reflecting upon artist John Gerard's practice. And indeed, much of what I'm going to say today will be an attempt to approach Gerard's work, his simulated environments, via a number of ideas gleaned from Fluser's thought. And I'm actually going to mostly, because of time, I'm going to mostly speak through his work. So they will be playing in, in the um, background. In the, in the title of this paper, Simulation and Model, a Flusserian reading of John Gerard's Artificial Worlds, there is present a tacit gesture to both distinguish and synthesize the separate concepts of simulation and uh, model. Genealogically, tracing a lineage all the way back to Plato's classical formulation of the simulacrum, a simulation signifies an illusionistic depiction of a real thing. That is, whilst the simulation provides a surface level resemblance to that which it seeks to emulate, it, rather importantly, is lacking in the ontological depth of the original. And in this classical conceptualization, the simulation aligns itself with the notion of deception. Within the history of art, styles such as figurative representation, as well as the utilization of photography and its various offshoots, are some of the clearest examples of this inclination made manifest. In fact, photography itself could be claimed to be the apex instantiation of the image assimilation with most dominant historical theories of the medium advocating for the photograph as some kind of ontologically reduced uh, representation of a real scene. So the photograph is a real scene, but it's a reduced version of it. However, in a contemporary context, wherein we find ourselves engulfed within the tendrils of computational complexity, the concept of simulation takes on another additive meaning. Herein, simulations are not simply predicated on the mimetic representation of surface level features, and instead employ advanced modeling algorithms that attempt to capture the internal dynamics and behavior of a system. Following political scientist Antoine Bousquet, we might say that it is the concept of modeling that is central in differentiating between these autonomous versions of simulation, uh, the first grounded in the mimesis that concerns itself only with attributes that can be immediately gra grasped, by per per that grasped by perception, <coughs> sorry, and the second with a desire to construct a series of below surface level operations that seek to emulate the functioning of a system. These distinct but still interconnected variants on the concept of simulation can be said to exert a significant influence over the work of Gerard. Uh, for the past 15 years, the artist's practice has involved the reconstruction of painstakingly and incredibly technically proficient photorealistic virtual environments, situating themselves along a formal continuum that runs through austere pseudoscientific-esque documentary photography. These artificial worlds find a particular historical affinity in the photographic typologies of Bernd and Hiller Becker. Similar to the German-born photographic duo, Gerard's com um, computer-generated simulations majoritively take as their subject matter industrial, depeopled environments and structures. So typically, um, he looks at um, kind of centers of global power, but, kind of, but they are these really depeopled, austere um, environments. The artificial worlds themselves, uh, rendered with the help of, of a team of programmers using software designed for the development of three-dimensional environments, are depicted with an intense level of realism that is suggestive of a cool, clinical, and detached, illusionistic model. For despite their outwardly 
um, natural, sorry, my can't read this, natural appearance, Jared's worlds are virtual simulations whose operations accord with the core logic of algorithmic procedures. And this aspect of the work's being presented as real-time simulations rather than simply a rendered video file is something which the artist has always emphasized and foregrounded in the exhibition and reception of the works. So this actually is a photograph, it's not a video, but um, when the works are usually exhibited, um, it's very clearly emphasized that this is uh, real time. This is happening in real time, it's not a rendered video file. So usually in like this work here, the computer is in the back end. That's why there's a bit of depth to this panel. Accordingly, Accordingly, Jared's practice, at least formally, formally, can be said to be principally concerned with interrogating the dissimilarity and tension, one whose line has progressively liquidated within our own era, between two discrete conceptualizations of a technologically interpolated simulation. We might refer to these separate categories as simulation as mimetic representation, photography here is the paradigm, which is a simulation of the surface, and simulation as model, wherein the, wherein the simulation is produced by modeling a series of hidden internal parameters. And typically as well, the content of Gerard's work, work has a tendency to mimic and probe this, du this duality. So for example, on screen now you can see an extract, yes, it's moving, uh, from Farm, Prior Creek, Oklahoma from 2015. Um, this is a virtual recreation of one of Google's data server buildings, uh, sometimes referred to as a data farm in Oklahoma in the United States. Um, in, in 2014, the artist actually approached Google to take some photographs and videos of the site, but was denied. So what he ended up doing was hiring a private helicopter to perform a photographic survey of the zone with the virtual scene then recreated from this photographic documentation. And what the viewer is confronted with is this tension between hypervisibility and invisibility. On the one hand, the environment itself has been, has been meticulously reanimated to look almost lifelike. And then on the other, what is actually being de depicted is representative of a black box, a system whose innards are entirely obscured, as even if we were able to glance recreations of the interior physical servers themselves, what is significant about this particular farm is that their material, uh, that the material they are working with, um, that being uh, computational data, is invisible and mostly abstract to human perception. So we are given, on the one hand, we are given too much on the surface only for the internal flow, um, information flows to recede indefinitely from view. <clears throat> At this point, in order to garner a better under understanding as to how Gerard's works function as both aesthetic and, epistemo and epistemological mo 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 models, I will turn to the writings of Willem Flusser. In the Anglophone world, Flusser is mostly known for his theory of the, of the technical e image. This refers very simply to any image that is produced by an apparatus. And Flusser distinguishes between apparatuses and traditional machines in that the former operates according to a calculatory thought. So apparatuses are effectively calculating ma machines. In initially taking the photograph as its paradigm, Fuser emphasizes that all forms of technical imagery are not, in the first instance, mimetic representations of reality and are instead always already, again, only in, only in the first instance, an image of concepts that is the representational possibility space of the technical image is contained entirely within the apparatus which produces, which produced it, sorry. As he states, every point on the photographic surface relates directly to a point in the camera program. And we can observe this perspective being particularly evident in Gerard's works as every dimension of their artifice is quite explicitly derived from a computational paradigm. As the production and distribution of these category of images continues to accelerate within post-industrial information societies, Flusser announces that it has led to the construction of a universe of technical images. This technical image universe for Flusser exists as a partially enclosed cosmology that is fully real. Ergo, 
Flusser does not believe that the universe of technical images is some kind of immaterial domain. It is very much a materialist construction. And unlike other prevalent media, theorists of the media, uh, with whom he is typically associated, such as Jan Baudrillard, who warns of the societal and political consequences of the fourth rung of simulation, uh, Flusser, and he is similar to Gerard's works in this regard, always remained rather ambivalent towards the duality of both the utopian and ruinous potentialities that could be initiated by this technical, uni uh, technical image uh, universe change. <clears throat> the the, the uh, technical image as a phenomenological artifact is for Flusser representative of a, of a particular kind of model that is unique to our age. And it is one, and this time similar to Baudrillard, whose operational procedures increasingly uh, condition and dictate the experience and behaviors of humans. To, to return to, to the quote which I opened this paper with, it directly continues with Flusser stating, I quote, the uh, question arises why models are being changed. The answer is that they tend to become unsatisfactory for two main reasons. A, they become unsatisfactory if one no longer trusts their fidelity, and or B, they may become unsatisfactory if they are hard to read." End quote. Flusser argues that models themselves cannot really change our vision of the world as they are always defined by an already existing projection that is grounded in an attempt to understand present conditions and phenomena. I will end here by positing that Gerard's uh, artificial worlds are, in, are indicative of models that do not necessarily seek to change our vision of the world but rather to highlight the deficiencies of, of our current models of representation for understanding the vast meshwork of algorithmic systems and networks that increasingly govern our everyday reality. Whilst the hyperrealism of Gerard simulations immediately gesture towards the possibilities of a superrealism that would be more able to accurately diagram the scene which it seeks to emulate, their grounding in and development from invisible computational processes actually exacerbates our perceptual distance from the ostensible, represent, from the ostensible representational content of the scenes themselves. So here in the model of figurative representation actually wraps back around to its classical conceptualization as a deceptive illusion. Um, thank you very much.